everybody and welcome to the United Stand. It's our Manchester United versus Newcastle United preview show. I'm joined by Matty from the Magpies channel. How are you doing, pal? Fine, John, everyone. Yeah, good, mate. Well, as good as you can be in our current predicament. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I've, I've, I've entitled our show Three Easy Points for Jose Mourinho, and that's going to be my stance on this. And no disrespect to Newcastle, but you've not had the best start to the season. Seven games, five losses, two draws... Two points. This for some United fans, they don't want to play you because I, I, it's the perfect game for Manchester United to realistically should get three points when you compare the squads and everything, and that will keep Mourinho in a job. I mean, how do you feel about this game? Some would say it's a perfect time to play United, but I can't see you scoring. I think that's your problem. I mean, I touched that on that on the preview that I did for our channel. Um, I said it's the perfect time. It's probably the best ever time since I've been alive, since the 90s, to play Manchester United. However, I usually be looking at that on the same scale as it's the best time to play Newcastle United. Like you said, we're after a very poor start. There's a lot of negativity and hostile around the club. We're going to make Ashley, but it's kind of the same with you lot, where it's clear to see to me that Mourinho has lost the dressing room. Um, mm. There's certain sections of the fans that are on his back and want to change. So that's why we're looking at it. And obviously, I've been watching news lately, you know, Valencia the other night, a bit of a bore draw away at West Ham, getting beat 3 1. That was a very poor performance. And that reiterates the fact of how it looks like Mourinho's lost his players. Um, so it's a great time to play Manchester United. It's a great time to go to a, a ground like Old Trafford and, and go for the three points. But under our you know, performances this season, it's been, it's been a bit dull, it's been negative. You're right. There's not many goals, there's not much going forward. So it's hard to call. It's very hard to call, and I'm trying to be optimistic. I said I would normally take a draw going there, but I want to see three points. But this weekend, I do think he'll probably still edge it. That little bit of quality, you know, the, the, the standard of players you've got, a total league above ours. So. Definitely. You know, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, you know, Newcastle, but I just think that, as I said, I mean, I just don't think they could, Manchester United could lose this game. And I know clips will be of this if we do lose, but I just cannot see how Manchester United would lose this game. And in some ways it's irritating. I mean, the most important way is I want Manchester United to win because I'm a Manchester United fan. But in some ways it's irritating because I know what it means and I'll say it right now in preparation for all the match reactions and all the flip-flop fans who suddenly say, let's give Mourinho another chance. Let's not give him a chance. He's, he's had more than mm. enough chances and beating Newcastle at home should be what Manchester United are capable of doing with the players that he's got and I fully expect him to do that. So I'm going to say that now I think we'll win and I'll still say after the game that... I still think he needs to go because I think his time has passed. But in relation to Newcastle, what can you tell us about? I mean, I know that obviously we know the results. We know that you're struggling to score. Um, I actually think if this was at St. James's Park, like last February, it would be a tough game for us, the form we're in. But what's your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What's the style of play? What's your formation? How will you set up, do you think, for this game? Well, starting off with the strengths, I would say... Rafa's always a manager that's going to make it hard to beat. You know, we, we found that out early on. We've, we've came up against the, the top four in the likes of Man City, Spurs, Chelsea, and we've only been beaten by a goal. And in a lot of those games, there's been penalties and the odd thing where there could have easily been draws. So the thing is with Rafa, although fans might not like it, and, you know, one for the, the, the negativity, the goal difference last season seemed to finish 10th. And, and that was the case. On the last game of the season, we couldn't have finished anywhere between 10th and 16th. We finished 10th. That was throughout the season. He's, his tactics are making you hard to beat. That's first and foremost what he'll do. I expect him to probably play five at the back. I'm hearing Paul Dummett and um, Fernandez, who were saying from Swansea in the summer, we're going to be back in the Stomp 11, who's been a good signing. I just the, the problem with Newcastle is, is that we've got Stoke City's fifth try strike up front for £5 million in Hoslu. And he offers you little or nothing. He can't shoot. He can't pass. He can't run. The only thing he's half decent at is headers. Yet we don't get the ball out wide enough. Rafa seems to have a fallen out with Matt Ritchie. Kennedy brought in on loan from Chelsea. Had a great little stint with us last year. Doesn't look interested this year. So we're really struggling in the final third to cause any sort of threat. Um, and that, that's where the problems lie, to be honest with you. I think he will set with a 5 4 1. He will try and catch us. But it goes down to, I think, your quality shining through. I'd probably see. The likes of Rashford, someone like that, you know, popping up with that little bit of skill and finesse to, to nick a, a one or two, and unfortunately for us. If I was a spy for uh, any other club 
uh, other than Manchester United to say how to beat Manchester United, then I would say the best way to beat United is to have pace on the break and keep the ball on the ground and, 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 and pass it around because we are terrible, terribly slow as a team mm. and we're not a very good footballing side. But I suspect you're probably going to come to Old Trafford and sort of part the bus is our word, but, you know, sit deep. Um, and I think any team that sits deep against United probably gives us the advantage because the way to hurt United, as we saw with Wolves, as we saw with Derby, is to be uh, brave and expansive. But it doesn't sound like you've got that quality in that sort of attacking area to, to go and do that, which I think will play into our hands, which is I think we'll win. Because if a team sits back, we can always loft a few balls into Fellaini and stuff. And you've got that little bit of quality it's when teams go at us that, and we have to sit back ourselves, that's when we become vulnerable, like West Ham. Mm. Precisely. I mean, the problem is with Newcastle, I mean, Rafa tried it with Christian Atsu on the weekend, bit of pace, just not good enough, just not enough in the final third. Jacob Murphy, another championship player. And to be fair, Rafa is what he's working under Mike Ashley, the same as that we're, we can only afford to make. The thing is, though, a lot of fans are crying out to see Muto start. Um, because a bit of pace up front is, is what we needed against Leicester, against slow centre-backs and Maguire and Morgan. And again, like you've touched on, to hurt Manchester United, we need pace. So just start with the likes of Kennedy, Kennedy and Woodrow. We'll try and get in behind because nothing's going to happen with the likes of Hoslu being stale up front and starved of service. So get the ball out way to Richie and Kennedy and try and get the ball up top quickly. And we need players like John Joe Shelby to step up because he's a great player on his day, but he's been very poor this season as well, just like the rest of the eleven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, if you can get it, you're not down the width. Certainly our Valencia side, the right-hand side, we've been very weak there. I think Luke Shaw's been steady this season. In fact, he's been more than that. He's been very good. But if you've got something down the left, that could cause us a problem. Uh, quickly then, what, what I'm going to go uh, United to win it 2-0. Uh, um, what, what, I, know, I know you're a Newcastle fan, but I, I don't think you can get anything more than a draw. But do you fancy that? What are you going to go for at the weekend? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go me heart. See us nil nil. He says we'll 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 scrap a draw or a one one, but realistically I think we're looking at a one nil rash bad or a comfortable three nil unfortunately. I'm not I'm not very confident. It's a shame. It all depends on how we go for it, but just with our squad, I mean you look at New York players, you know, Sanchez's wage is more than what we spend on a single player. We spent one million in the summer. What can we expect? Unfortunately, that's the the, the dire show we're, we're suffering here at St. James Park at the moment. I certainly think you know when I you know when obviously we're not a Newcastle fan channel, but Newcastle is a club that you always associate with the Premier League. And um, I mean, just very quickly, if you want to just give us a minute or so on what you think your future is, because it just seems to be a mess. Massive, massive support, very passionate support, big ground. I mean, I'm not saying Newcastle should be challenging for titles, but they certainly should be challenging for the top eight. And again, it looks like a season where you're going to be. Looking at looking down at the championship with a bit of nervous nervousness, and and is it all on Mike Ashley? Just a badly run club. It is because I mean, neither do we expect titles. You know, a lot of time Newcastle fans get called deluded and whatnot. It's not the case. You look at Burnley; they haven't spent much money. They haven't got world class players. They haven't got a world class manager. Yet they're in the well, they were in Europa League. You know, they get a top seven finish. Surely Newcastle United can compete for the top eight, top ten. Last season, you know, finished tenth. That was a summer to kick on. Like I say, Rafa got one million pound to spend. We got in Salomon Rondon as a loan signing from a relegated club. It was our star signing in the summer. Pretty much sums it up on a mate. Actually, you know, we we have got a top class manager, Rafa Benitez. Yes, it's been very negative so far this season. However, the caliber of clubs he's came up against, you can't really blame him. The, our season doesn't really start until Brighton two weeks time at home when we're playing teams in and around without we need to win. Yes, the Leicester game was disappointing. You know, that was the worst I've seen us play for a long time, I've got to be honest with you. I was really expecting three points or at least a draw there. Leicester didn't even have to get out a second gear to beat us. And that's why I'm not confident going to Old Trafford. Even with everything you've got on, I don't think it'll take much to, to nick one or two goals. But for Newcastle going ahead, I think with Rafa Benitez, we'll finish around 16th. I don't think we'll go down. I think we'll stay up. Uh, Mike actually had a team meeting with the players in Rafa Benitez last night in an Italian restaurant. No one knows exactly what it was discussing yet, whether you sell the club, whether you stay in. There's a lot of rumours. What we need is a bit of investment in January. Rafa may get that. If we're deep in trouble. If we're lingering in the relegation zone still. But under Mike Ashley, under no ambition, I'd expect nothing more than a mid-table finish. Matty, thanks for joining us for the first few minutes of the show. Uh, Magpie's channel, that's correct, isn't it, on YouTube? 
the Magpie channel, mate. Yes, thank you very much. No worries at all. And if you're down at the game on Saturday, pop over with Flex, give us a fan cam and we'll we'll do likewise if you want. But cheers for coming on and really appreciate giving us that insight into Newcastle. Yeah, cheers, mate. No worries. I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, mate. Uh, drop Check out the Magpie Channel merchandise. Hoodies, hats, t-shirts, embroidered and printed available and the back print on the new t-shirts. All sizes available. The link will be in the description of this video uh, to the Etsy, it's etsy.co.uk slash the Magpie Channel. Make sure you check it out. Support us. It goes back into the channel. It goes into new equipment. Away days. Prize giveaways for yourselves if you haven't seen the Magpie 4 videos. Mm -hmm. Enjoy yourselves.